this is Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. Um, this episode is being recorded on Monday, May 19th, and it's about just a little after 5 o'clock. Um, I'm going to try and get this done before Best Friend comes home. Um, I'm going to tell you a slight story of woe. The last time I recorded was on a Friday, and I had left work a little early. I was very excited because I got everything done, was going to get the podcast done. And then, for whatever reason, my iPad and my computer wouldn't talk anymore. Um, normally, I record on the iPad. I build the episode on the iPad, adding in the photos, um, the intro and everything. And then I uh, save it all as a movie file and then plug it into my computer and it shows up like a camera and I copy the movie file over. Compress it on the laptop and then start uploading. Well, <laughs> for whatever reason, my iPad and my iPhone would not talk to the computer. I could plug them in. They would ask, do you want to trust this computer? Which is a new thing. Um, I'd say, yes, trust. And it would charge never showed up as something I could copy from. And I went round and round and round and round. I was using a lot of words you don't normally hear me using. <laughs> I was very mad at it. Um, eventually, now I have a very nice app that copies, as long as you're in um, on the same wireless network, like you're in the house, I can move movie files from my iPod to my iPad. And I do this sometimes because while photos go on to photo stream, movies of any significant size do not. And sometimes if I used my phone to record a video like at, you know, my son's concert or something like that, I have to copy the um, movie file over if I want to include it. And so I use this uh, app. I think it's just called Transfer. Um, I finally looked and it turned out that they had a way that you could also transfer from an iDevice to a computer. And so I installed the software on my computer and then I could transfer it wirelessly, but not the whole video. So I had to splice the video to make it into smaller chunks, send the pieces over, and then in Movie Maker, put them back together. <laughs> it was really, it ended up being where I thought I was so far ahead of schedule, I ended up way, way behind. So that was a couple Fridays ago. And then this past weekend I could have recorded and I hadn't resolved that issue yet and I was so pissed off at it, I just decided to wait. <laughs> um, which actually works out okay. Um, the Cystic Fibrosis Walk was this past weekend, which means the deadline for donating for prizes is done. So we will be drawing that today. And in the meantime, today, I took some extra time and while I was waiting for something to run at work, I started looking up, again, Googling more information on items to see if I could figure out how to fix the iPad and the iPhone issue. And one of the things I read was if you were having an issue with iTunes, which I don't have iTunes on my computer. But if you're having an issue with iTunes and it wasn't connecting, you uninstall everything in a specific order and then then and then restart your computer and then the next time you plug in your iPhone, it'll signal the system to um, re-download all the drivers and everything and get it and set it up as if it's new. So I didn't have iTunes, but I had all the rest of the mobile device support and application support and all these other things. And so I uninstalled all of those, restarted, plugged it back in, it installed all the drivers, and then today it could see my iPhone and I could copy stuff back and forth again. So I am assuming that the iPad will also work. To be honest, I didn't test it yet, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> I will probably test it before I put everything all together um, because it will be easier to send the small videos you know, before I add all the photos and everything. It'll be easier to send the small ones to the computer if I need to. Um, 
rather than the big one. <sighs> so, hopefully, hopefully it'll all be good though. I, I, I'm, I really think it probably will be just because of the fact that the iPhone now showed up. Because that was the other thing; it was happening with both devices. It wasn't one or the other. Um, you know, one of the things they say is to check the cable. It couldn't be the USB cable because my iPhone uses a lightning connector and my iPad uses the old 30 pin connector so I was already using different cables so that wasn't it and frankly the one I used today that was that I successfully did stuff with actually is like a, hor a cable that's in horrible shape it actually is missing rubber all that to say that this is why it is there was a little bit more of a delay but as I said it worked out because now I can also do the uh, prizes for the cystic fibrosis walk and uh, sorry um, and then I can I, I delayed shipping the prizes for the May and June because several people that won prizes in May and June also donated to cystic fibrosis and I figured there was a very good chance they'd win something else so I was going to hold off on shipping prizes and then I just decided to just hold off on all of them and I'll ship as much as I can tomorrow. So all of the ones for, for the March and June are done. Everybody, um, not everybody has contacted me about their prizes. So um, I need info from Grandma Kay. Um, Harper needs to contact me. And a couple of spin on lady and somebody else. I don't remember who the other person is. Um, I also, if um, there was somebody who um, is donating a shawl late, I sent I sent her a pattern off her wish list. Um, and um, the person who donated the purple wrap that we're giving away for cystic fibrosis because I sent her a pattern too. Also because she is incredibly loving and supportive both of the podcast and of everything else. So, all right. Since you haven't seen me, I actually do have things done. Um, or at least worked on. I, last time I talked to you, I was working on crocheting this guy. Now this was the crocheted flat pattern. So you knit, or you, well, the knit flat and the crocheted flat have the exact same structure for building. So the, so for both of them, you do one leg up to, uh, up to the join. You do the other leg up to that point, and then you join all the way around. Um, well, not all the way around. Um, this is the back and forth. <laughs> up, up, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, change to the body, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, change to the head, do six inches of brown color for the head, and then go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the on the sweater, back and forth, back and forth on the on the butt, and then back and forth, back and forth on one leg, and then pick up and join, do back and forth, back and forth on the other leg. Um, and then there's a really wonky procedure for how to join the arms. But essentially, you fold in half. Now, the directions say fold in half, attach the arms, and then later stuff the head. Or later seam the head. I think it's easier to seam the head and then deal with the arms. Um, it comes out to the same thing. Now, he's got a pretty obvious seam. I do not seam well in crochet. I just can't figure out exactly where I should do it, and so eventually I just give up and decide that whatever child gets him is not going to care that much. They're just going to be happy they got a bear. So, if you want more instructions, the um, video for doing the knit flat is on YouTube. It's also linked um, in the technique links of the show notes page. It's also on the Mother Bear Ravelry thread. And one of my bears, which is linked in the Ravelry thread, also has um, diagrams of, exa of exactly what you're doing. So I think between all that, you can do it. Um, 
the, like I said, the construction for the knit flat and the crochet flat are exactly the same. Now this one I just finished is crocheted in the round. Now I'm going to tell you something. I crocheted him when my hand was mostly all wrapped up and I crocheted her when my hand was all better. They are significantly different in size. Same number of rounds or you know rows, rounds, but same number. Um, you actually do these rounds, you go this direction and then this direction and this direction and then this direction so the stitches stack up the exact same way. Same same yarn. I mean, it's the same same yarn for the head, same yarn for the sweater, um, same brand of yarn for the pants. I don't know why she's significantly smaller. And I guarantee you when mom gives me her bears, they're going to be significantly bigger than this. But the um, mother bear site says they prefer them to be about 12 inches tall so they fit in the boxes. I mean, they've never seen them turn anything away. But I'm not going to feel too bad. <laughs> I just find the gauge issue very interesting. But this one was done in the round, so it's seamless. Um, you do you do a chain and then you go around both sides of the chain. And then like I said, you keep you go around this way and then up and then this way and then up and then this way and then up. You keep doing a, a chain, a turning chain and then you go and you keep going the opposite direction. It gives it the same texture as if you were doing back and forth flat. Um, when I was doing the legs, my seams ended up right up and down. When I was doing the butt and, and part of the sweater, I jogged. And I'm sure that's me. Because then later, um, when I finished up, this part of the seam goes straight up. I, and so does the head. So I just, I struggle counting in crochet sometimes. Um, anyway, so you go in the round, in the round, and you again you do one leg, and then you do the the other leg, and then you go, um, and then you go around, and connect and connect them. You end up with a slight hole um, where the legs meet, but you just take one of the um, in the tails and weave it up. So go roundy, 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 go roundy, roundy, roundy on the sweater until you get to about here. Actually, it was a little weird. It said to stop at the pants, then make your arms, then do some of the sweater, and then join the arms. I don't. If I was going to do it again, I would just go all the way up to the armpits and then do the arms, but whatever. <laughs> um, you do the arms, and you actually end up doing a raglan decrease. You can just barely see the de the decrease lines but you start out with the you join the arms and the body all together and then you keep doing decreases al right along here I have pictures of all the steps for this on her page and I also explain in words probably better than I'm doing now because you can look at the picture and go back and forth I did not make a video for her um, I would just have to put the pictures together so if somebody really needs it I will do it but it's not on my plans at the moment so I am the next bears I do will probably be knit um, one will be knit in the round using the pattern um, because the knit seamless bear um, that comes the pattern that comes from mother bear is different than the one than the way I did it in the round when I created my tutorial. Um, when I created my tutorial, I did Judy's Magic Cast On and did both legs as if I was doing socks two at a time. And then I joined them together and did the body. Um, and I actually did the body and all the way up to the head and Kitchenered the head shut. And then when I attached the arms, um, they're actually closed at the seams unlike these where they're um, open and, and fully stuffed in the armpit. So, well, probably, so I'm going to do a in the round following their directions just so I can kind of see and compare the differences. All right, um, let me post pictures of the bears and the steps and take a breath.
Right. Um, I also have worked a little bit. This is my um, fruit stripe gum sock. I just started decreasing for the toe. You can barely even tell. Um, you can tell just a little bit right here. There's a little bit of an angle. Um, I started the decreasing today, but I um, I had I've knit a few stripes since you saw it last, and then I started decreasing today. So I suspect it will be done by the next time I record, and then I can start the second sock. It just it hasn't been the thing I've been working on, honestly. I also, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't look for the Wind in the Willows Unique Sheep Mystery Cow. Um, I'm saying again, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't look. All right, I'm going to show it now. And as soon as I show it, I'm also going to stop and pause and put a picture. So this is just clue one. Um, it's a circular shawl, so I did Emily Ocker's circular cast on in the middle. If you're a crocheter, it's similar to doing a magic ring, except for instead of connecting the stitches, you leave them live so that you can put them on the knitting needle. I actually started this on four DPNs. Actually, I started with three DPNs and then later increased to four DPNs. And I was using clover wood DPNs because the stitches won't slide off. Um, but I will continue in the round on... Uh, via magic loop or traveling loop or whatever you want to call it. So, and I'm going to stop here and put the picture in. So, we're free from spoilers again. And there wasn't anything I said there that gave it away because if you're doing the knit, the knit along, you already know it's a circular shawl and it would have a circular start. So, um, the other thing I worked on you never saw started because I started and finished it in two days. Um, a while back, Victoria Blue gave me, who used to be Schmopey, <laughs> gave me some um, t-shirt yarn that she uh, sent me from Israel. And there is a brand of yarn, uh, is, it starts with a Z, and then it looks like spaghetti, so it's a spaghetti. Um, it, this is very similar to that yarn but this was from Israel and I couldn't tell you much because all of it was in Hebrew but it came on these cones so I decided to make a uh, rug and the cats have, are already loving this rug and it's full of cat fur but actually I should say while I was working on it Tigger was all over me. He was burying himself in it and he was laying across it and I could barely work on it and now that it's done he wants nothing to do with it Missy, however, thinks it's hers, and I actually had to fight her to get it so that I could show you guys. But um, when I was working on it on Saturday night, Mom commented that she thought it would be slippery on the floors. Actually, it's so heavy, um, it doesn't really slip and slide. Although I suppose if the cats take a running leap at it, it'll slide nice across the floor. But in general, it seems to be pretty weighed down by texture and... Uh, pure heaviness, but it's probably, um, it's probably three feet across or just under. Um, I used up almost all of the yarn. I used up all I could. The pattern is the um, mandala rug. It was a free pattern. I'll link to the Ravelry site, but the pattern itself is actually someone's blog page. I didn't quite follow it correctly. Um, it was supposed to be blue one more row, and then three rows of green, and then three rows of blue. I didn't do that. I messed up at the beginning and changed colors too soon, but it doesn't matter. I like the way it came out. And I didn't end up doing the scallops on the edge because no matter how I played with it, I didn't have enough yarn to do so, so I ended up just doing a, another round of single crochet and uh, calling good enough. So, and now Tiggy wants to be all over it. All right, let me show you a picture of the rug, including with Missy.
I also have worked on my um, knit swirl, which you guys have seen. It looks pretty much the same, honestly, except for the fact that I have started the neckline. So I'm no longer going in the round. I'm now going back and forth flat and decreasing a stitch every row. I am really having trouble understanding how this goes on the body. So I think I'm just going to have to be surprised when it's all done. Um, but it's going well. I'm a little worried I'm going to run out of yarn, but it's also getting significantly smaller each round. Um, but I still have to do sleeves eventually. I don't have a new picture of that because it looks the same. <laughs> so I also this week got a prize um, when Sadie of the Yarnivore podcast was doing the snuggles. I actually won this, but I had act I forgot all about it, <laughs> and I uh, I had totally totally forgotten about this, and so I was very confused when I had a package, but. This was the yarn I won. Um, I think I got it from the podcaster drawing, honestly. But it's smooshy sock, and I have no idea what the colorway is, but it is uh, lilacs, mostly. So, very pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Hi, Mr. Tiggies. Alright, and now I think we are set for doing the drawing for the cystic fibrosis. Now, there are, if I counted right, there are seven prizes and eight entries, which means that me being me, whoever doesn't win one of the prizes is gonna get a pattern on Ravelry because when it's that close, I just, I feel like everybody deserves something. So, now we had this special drawing for $25 or over. I only have people in there that I know for sure donated $25 or more and that's because they told me so. <laughs> if you did not tell me so then um, you're not in that drawing. So but I'm gonna do I have I wrote everybody's names on slips of paper and what I did is I put the $25 or more in the baggie we're gonna draw that one and then I'm gonna put the rest of the papers in and we'll draw for everything else. So. This is the absolutely beautiful uh, purple wrap. It was from Deanna McCall. I don't remember what the shop was. I have it linked in the show notes and stuff. So um, we're going to draw that one first. So the baggie is full of it has the people that did 25 or more, and it is. Oh, Beagle Mom Knitter. Oh, which reminds me, <laughs> Angela. <laughs> um, I am probably going to meet Angela um, like 4th of July weekend time period. Uh, best friend used to go to Washington, D.C. for an Aikido seminar uh, or camp through around over the July 4th weekend. So we're going to D.C., the previous weekend, so like June 28th, we were taking the Amtrak train because we thought it would be a cool adventure. Um, we are staying at a hotel right downtown, so it's within walking distance of the Smithsonian, it's within walking distance of the train station. Um, we're going to have a couple days together. Tiff is going to join us on Monday, and she has a friend who works at the Smithsonian, so we're all going to go on that tour. And then Wednesday, he starts his camp, and I'm going down to Virginia to spend the spend days with Tiff. And then that Sunday, we make the trip back. So since Beagle Mom Knitter lives near Tiff, I'm, we are hoping to all meet up. And if possible, we will try and record an episode like we usually do. So, um, Angela, you won this. Um, we discussed me just bringing it in July, but I may just mail it just so I know it's done. There's sometimes I don't, I like to check things off my boxes. Um, now I'm going to put the rest of the names into my little baggie here. And, um, K 
Kim, who is the mom involved with cystic fibrosis, uh, she wanted to say thank you to me and to everybody that donated in the name of the podcast. All right. Next up. I'm just reaching in the bag and what I grab, I grab. This is the Sheep Dreamery. This is the It's Glitz Base. The colorway is Fruit Punch. And this is going to Leave me in my baggie. Catham. And I believe she is one of the, I know she's one of the people who won a prize from last month and I had asked her to please hold off because I was going to, uh, same with Beagle Mom Netter. Um, they both won prizes last month and I had asked them to please, um, hold off and I would send them their prizes um, together because I knew by the uh, how many people had donated that they were going to win a prize. Alright, I'm reaching in again. Alright, this is fiber. This is CJ Coho hand dyed top blue face lister. It's called Liberty and Justice for All. Now this comes with optional spinning, so whoever wins this, you are you need to tell me if I should spin it for you. Um, I actually will probably contact everybody instead of waiting, making you wait um, because of the fact that I need to know if I need to spin that. I was going to spin over the weekend and then remembered I didn't want to put anything on the wheel until I got these done. So. Java Pearl! So that is Cece, and Cece is going to have to tell me if she wants me to spin it. All right, I'm going to pause for just a second because my phone is buzzing, and also I'm going to post those prizes so far. All right, if you notice that things look different, that is because while we were paused, I knocked down my curtain on my head and my stuff, and I dropped the, the iPad, and I messed up the stand, and I'm pretty sure it's not all put back together. All right, next drawing, Strictly Socks. In. Harper. So that is Robin. Okay, right, sticking it in there. All right. No, I think I miscounted. I may have to give two people uh, pattern prizes. Alright, next prize is the other fiber. This one is Cloud Lover, Superwash BFL in Sante Sangre. Again, with optional spinning, so whoever wins needs to let me know. As I was looking up before, I had to, um, have another one of those meetings in the giant room with lots of people. And one of the things that happens is it's so big that if people are talking, they have to push a button so that they their voice is mic'd. Also, it means that it will get re, um, it'll be able to be heard by anybody that's watching from or watching from a distance and listening on the phone. But also, and, and then it comes through the big speakers in the ceiling. And also, if somebody's on the phone, their voice comes through the ceiling. Well, the first the first time I had to go in that big room, nobody told me this, but now best friend is in our department, and he told me that when I'm listening to the speakers, I look up at the sky instead of looking out in the audience to see if I can see who's talking. <laughs> he said, I look up at the sky and then look at toward where the voices are coming from. 
He also made a comment about I look like I'm speaking to God. All right. This is for the cloud lover. Oh, Sabrina. Stop, Rob. All right. All right. Two more here. Um, we will do the twisted carousel. I believe it's self-striping. I'm not positive. Angel Mom 3. <laughs> you, you can't tell, but my pen ran out of ink. So she's the only one that got written in that pen. And it's like hard to read. But Angel Mom 3 wins the Twisted. Alright. Last physical prize. The Fishnet's Warm Heart gradient sock yarn. It says shades of TP, TPK. I don't know what that means. Um, a Liz Stitches. So, that is all of the physical prizes. And I am going to I'm going to do one more prize from over here. And I hope the person likes it. Alright. Little Lib, that's Ruth. You are going to win this Dizzy Color Sunnydale. All the Underworld is a stage. And I'm sorry. Oh wait, nope. I have the little I have the little thingy. I thought I lost it. I am sending you this. I thought I was going to do one pattern prize. So, and the pattern prize will go to Mountain Pearl. I think she won a pattern prize last month. Anyway, that is everybody. Um, remember, Mother Bears for this these coming two months. Um, the next one after that will be Halos of Hope Hats. So if you wanted to start working on that. If you start, feel free, whoever is first, open a thread for Halos of Hope Hats. I haven't done it because I, it's not that month yet. But I know a few people are doing hats. So if you want to be donating them, if you're planning on donating them to Halos of Hope, anyway, go ahead and put them in. Um, I think that's everything. I am going to... Uh, be contacting winners partially like I said because for the ones that I that may or may not need spinning I would like to know so I oh I was I was thinking that the threads of compassion meeting was tomorrow and it turns out that no it's not the third Tuesday it's the fourth Tuesday of the month which would be next week but when I contacted Lynn to tell her that I can't make it tomorrow she said no it's actually next week except because of the Memorial Day holiday, they're canceling it. So now I'm going to be going in June. And I'm actually going to be going the second Monday. Um, and the reason I was telling her I wasn't going, that I couldn't go this week, is because I know there's still some shawls on the way to, well, um, there's at least one shawl on the way to me, and there are four shawls sitting with Mom still. So that was enough uh, of a gap that I wanted to wait and then it turned out that they weren't having a meeting this month anyway in the evening um, but next month their daytime meeting is during lunch hour and so best friend said he will go with me and if that's the case that means perhaps he can help take pictures or video or something like that I don't really know what to expect but I like the option so I will talk to you guys all later have a good week. Bye now.